If you love Chevys, then this is the place for you. This is the Menard Chevy Series, where we tour the country to find the finest race cars and rides that are part of the bowtie breed. Welcome to the Menard Chevy Series. We're at The Rock, no not Plymouth Rock, The Rock, Rockingham, North Carolina and Rockingham Dragway, and we're about to check out some of the South's best Chevrolets. So let's start off with a producer pick. 1957 Chevy sedan delivery of Tony Moody. Tony, and this car's been in the family for how long? Uh, since about 1977 and it was a work truck. Tell us about it. Yeah, my dad used this uh, vehicle to deliver Bondo and tape, paper, stuff like that to start out his supply business. He was a mechanic and when he was working, if somebody called him, he would just drop his tools and go make deliveries. Uh, around 1990, he needed another vehicle for his business. I had an old El Camino that I traded him for it. It was just a, a daily driver with a 327 four-speed, and um, I, I tore the car completely apart and tubbed it and put the 502 big block in it. A uh, whole lot of work, definitely. I've driven a car probably four or five times since I finished it about uh, four months ago. Still has some work to go, though. Uh, definitely need seat belts and stuff, and I have a little more lettering to do to the body. Uh, a friend of mine, Greg Rudy, did all the uh, lettering on it, and I have a few more things to do to it. Since it's been in your family so long, what does your dad think of what you ended up doing to the car? Oh, he loves it. He, he thinks I did a good job. He told me I could do anything to the car I want except sell it, so it's got to stay in the family for life. Time now to take a look at our Duracell Copper Top Award winner. The DriveDuracell.com Crank It With The Copper Top Award goes to this unbelievable geo tracker of Delton Hover. Delton, what were you thinking when you put this car together? Well, the whole thing behind it was just do just something different. You know, you always see everything and it just looked repetitive from time to time. I said, well, I want to do something different. I want to take every color out of the crayon box, put it on one vehicle. I want to make it stand out from anything you've ever seen before. I just looked at the geo tracker one day and I said, that's it. And I took every color I could think of and put on it and I said, bigger has got to be better. So the taller the engine, the better. It, it drew into be a life-size Hot Wheel. That's what it came to end up being. Well, the induction system, it, it started with a small block Chevrolet 355 and I ended up putting a 671 blower on top and it has two Holley 750 double pumpers. Uh, a lot of nitrous, it has four stages of nitrous, 150 per plate, so it totals 600 shot of gas. And I just use an Enderly fuel injection scoop as a breather to add to the tallness and the cartoonness of it. So it's just like an engine part spacer, engine part spacer, so it's just kind of a gigantic cartoon car. But it's kind of like driving around a skyscraper. You just look to the left and hope you don't hit nothing on the right. You've even got the wind up on the back. I did, I put the high wheels little wind up on the back and I always tell large adults when they come around, I said, just don't wind it up too tight because it pops wheelies every time. I get on it when I go to some car shows and cruise ins and stuff like that. I don't really drag race it because it's so short wheelbase vehicle, it won't hook anyway. So I, just, I do burnouts with it and stuff like that just to show people that it is a real vehicle, it does run and it's, it, the toy is real. I go as much as I can, wherever I can, to state to state to state. They don't, if there's a car show and I know about it and I can make it, I'll go. Obviously with that engine, you got to crank it and Duracell helps you do that. Oh, most definitely. Without the Duracell, it cranks it most efficiently every single time. It's just a great vehicle with a great battery in the back. We see so many cool cars, but we also see a lot of cool trucks. And this one is a perfect example. 1959 Chevrolet Apache, owned by Dale Henson. Dale, this thing is outrageous. Congratulations. Thank you, appreciate it. Tell us about what went into putting it together. Um, the truck was built by Lee out at Zoomers Automotive in Denver, Colorado. And um, everything he done, he pretty much uh, made custom from the mirrors to tail lights to I mean, everything in the truck, the woods, original wood in the bed from the original truck. What about when you're on the street driving it? Uh, most of the time I haul it. I usually don't drive it on the street. It's a trailer. The reactions you get here at the show have been pretty big. I appreciate it, yeah. Usually it's a showstopper. 
Hey, people love to paint. I mean, they just love how the dark green goes with the light green, and it really makes it stand out, you know, from apart from any other truck. Tell us a little bit about the striping and the silver leaf. Um, Louis Allison out of Colorado, he did uh, his silver leaf pinstriping to break up the paint, and um, he did it all by hand. He goes inside the bed, goes behind the cab, and goes inside uh, behind the door. Attention to detail is outrageous. Oh, very. It's detailed underneath just like it is up top. And the wheels and tires make it sit perfectly. Yeah, those are billet rat tails. There are 20s on the front and 22s on the back. Stay with us for more of the Menard Chevy series when we'll check out a blown Biscayne that is a salute to the Marines. This episode of the Menard Chevy series is brought to you by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Original Parts Group, the world's largest source for GMA body parts and accessories. Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radios since 1977. And by Steel Rubber, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. Some of the cars here are stock, some are resto mod, some are pro street, and some are just flat outrageous. Like this 1960 Chevrolet Biscayne of Tim DeGrowey. Tim, the car is outrageous. Tell us about it. Uh, it's, uh, it's in its third rebuild. It's a 1960 Biscayne. Uh, it has an Al Lombardo 408. Uh, puts out about 738 horsepower. Regular 700 R4 transmission and curry rear end. I'll take it to cruise ins within 100 miles uh, because the gas miles should just kill me. You notice the chrome on the side, and then when you get up close and inspect it, that is not chrome. No, it's all airbrush. It's airbrush front to rear, and also the back balance is all airbrush. Uh, couldn't find any of the, the uh, aftermarket chrome, so just had it airbrushed, and, and I really love it. The dashboard, it's got gauges molded all together. Is that an aftermarket product? Uh, yes, it is. It's a speaker mount gauge pod. I saw that on a friend of mine's 59, and I said I just had to have it, and it, it really pops that interior and the uh, dashboard. The uh, seat buckles are all from the uh, Marine Corps cap devices, so I put those on there in tribute to uh, the Marines and, of course, all my brothers that are, that are still there and that uh, have gotten out of the service. Now let's check out the Original Parts Group Award winner. The Original Parts Group Original Award goes to this incredible 1966 Chevrolet Chevelle Don Case from Greensboro. Beautiful car. How'd you get here? Drove it down in the rain. It's got to be a driver. This is clearly a driver. Tell us all about it. It's a 1966 Chevelle. Uh, I've had the car since about 2008. I started the restoration in 2009 finished it up around 2010, and since that time, I've drove the car. I drive it pretty much to all the cruise ends. I drive it to Myrtle Beach every year, drive it to, uh, you know, four, five, six hour trips. Originally, I was gonna let the car be all original because the car pretty much was all original. The panels are original. A lot of the original interior components were in the car, and I kind of wanted to keep it original. Uh, but since the original motor was blown, I decided I was gonna do, you know, what I wanted to with it, make it a driver. So I never had a tri-power car, so I went with the uh, Corvette tri-power, three twos, and I've really enjoyed that. Uh, the car has a uh, Muncie eight-speed, which is, you say, how's it got an eight-speed? I put a gear vendor behind it, uh, which it has a overdrive. So it's a four-speed with an overdrive for each gear, and then the car is very drivable on the highway. Fortunately, I had a lot of the parts were there, but the parts I did buy from Original Parts Group, uh, bought a lot of the replacement chrome, uh, emblems, bought the uh, mirrors, door handles, uh, you know, because the quality, quality of their parts really made the car look a lot nicer. Oh, I get a lot of guys in our club that I'm in, they, they, they haul their cars, and of course I'm leading the pack and driving mine, so I enjoy driving it. Doesn't matter if the sun's shining or if it's raining, I'm going to drive it. Well, it is a beautiful car. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Appreciate the award and appreciate Original Parts Group. 
The 69 Camaro is absolutely iconic, but take an LS power plant, stuff it under the hood with some modern drive parts, and you've got a real street cruiser. We're here with Brandon Garrison. Brandon, your car is awesome. Tell us what's under the hood. Thank you. It's a GM performance, high performance crate motor, LS3, 525 horsepower. When I bought it in 2010, I drove it for two days, started tearing it apart, and now this is what I got. The rest, as they say, is history. What about the drivetrain? So it's got a uh, Trimac T56 Magnum six-speed transmission. Uh, all the other suspension up under, it's Detroit speed. Uh, it's got the four link in the rear, subframe connectors. It's fully finished underneath. So I really wanted to tie, you know, old school and modern together. So I kept the old school racing stripes, kind of sat down with a piece of paper, designed the side, and then my buddy, uh, Weber's Paint and Body, helped me paint the car. Uh, the wheels and tires, it's got a uh, Nitto NT05. The wheels are Rush Force, 18 by nines in the front, 19 by 12s in the rear. How often do you get to drive it out on the streets? Uh, when it's not raining. <laughs> well, it makes you nervous. Everybody wants to pull up beside you and, you know, tailgate you. They want to look at your car. And then when you pull into the gas station, the first thing when you get out, you're trying to pump gas, but you got a crowd of people that's wanting to talk to you. So they like you to get on it. They like to hear the motor. And uh, I guess I can understand that. Another classic Camaro is on tap when the Menards Chevy Series returns to Rockingham. Welcome back to Rockingham Dragway and the Menard Chevy Series. So far today, we've seen everything from a tricked out tracker to a supercharged salute to the armed services to a glorious green pickup. Now, here's a rare Corvette producer's pick. These cars are manufactured in 1996. There's a special edition, one year only. They made a thousand of them. All were numbered in the VIN. All came exactly as you see here, blue, white stripe, red hash marks, black wheels, all had LT4 engines and six-speed manuals. Uh, car handles like a go-kart, uh, real positive steering. I uh, always tell people that you can drive over some change and always tell exactly how much is there. Um, that car has got 315, 3517s out back, so the rear end stays planted pretty well. They made these cars on a video game called Gran Turismo. That's where everybody knows it from, so I always get asked a ton of questions about it. We talked about classic Chevrolets. You're right in the middle. There's newer ones, there's older ones. How does your car make you feel? I tell you, it's the uh, interior is kind of old school, all, all GM plastic, that's all it is. Uh, but I get respect from the old guys and the new guys, and it's a real, real fun car to have. Any modifications at all? I have upgraded the brakes uh, some. Uh, it's got an LT4 hot cam in it, but other than that, I've left it just as GM designed it. And what do you plan to do with the car? How long do you want to hold on to it? I bought this car in 2002. Uh, I plan on keeping it until I'm either too old to enjoy it uh, or it becomes worth some real money. <laughs> Time now for this week's Rock Auto Restored Award. The Rock Auto Restored Award winner is a 14-year build. And it might take that long if you're active duty military, as is Nate Hunsinger. Nate, beautiful car. Tell us about this build. Well, as you said, it's a 14-year build. Uh, bought it right before 9-11, June of 2001. It was originally going to be a father-son build. My dad has a shop up in uh, Pennsylvania. He got sick, had to sell the, the shop. And uh, I, of course, as you said, I'm in the Army, so I had to deploy to Iraq about three different times over the past 14 years. So I had to find people I could trust to help me finish it. And this is its first show. It's only got about 125 miles on it. And uh, it's a labor of love. What stands behind me is, is uh, a dream that has now been realized after uh, 14 years. It's a uh, 582 big block. It's a, a dart motor, uh, dart heads. Uh, everything on the car is specialty equipment, uh, aftermarket parts. Really the only thing that's Chevy about the car is the body. The interior uh, is locally done here in Pittsburgh. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of time and effort in designing that to get it to look right. It's mostly a, a black on black build. So I didn't want it to be uh, too flashy. I want it to be subtle, uh, have a sinister look to it, and I think we nailed it. The Pro Touring uh, build was basically to take modern uh, parts and plant them into a old school body so that you can drive it and enjoy it. Take it to autocross events, do uh, a power tour across the country and uh, basically enjoy it. It's got air conditioning, so power windows. It's got all the modern menus you would have in your daily driver. 
Rock Auto has been great. Now you would think, well, Rock Auto doesn't sell a lot of specialty equipment parts, and that's true, but what they do sell is a lot of off-the-shelf parts that you need for your daily driver. So in order to fund this build, uh, I had to build a lot of smaller builds, uh, 88 IROC Z, 87 Chrysler Conquest, 85 Chevy short bed pickup. I had to build those cars on the side and use Rock Auto parts to turn a profit with those builds and then all that money went into this. Well, it turned out great. Congratulations on your car. What does your dad think of it? Oh, he loves it. Uh, he's just glad it's out of his shop because I would just bug him all the time about it to help me finish it. But uh, <laughs> all kidding aside, uh, he's very happy it's done and uh, after 14 years, so am I. Still more of the Menard Chevy series to come, including a rare Brookwood wagon with lowrider roots. This episode of the Menard Chevy series is brought to you by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Rock Auto, all the parts your car will ever need. Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radio since 1977. And by Drive Duracell, crank with the copper top. Menard Chevy Series, beautiful car show, drag race cars on track, and of course, the legendary Rock. Here with the owner, Steve Earwood. Steve, what a great track, great turnout for this Chevy event. Well, thank you, and what great weather. We finally got blessed with a good weekend, and uh, we had a lot of rain in the southeast, you know, during the fall, so uh, we're great to see the sunshine and great to see all these show cars. And representing very well the Chevrolets that are here, some outrageous cars. You know, you're in the hotbed of motorsports in North Carolina. You know, we're the home of NASCAR, and we have several professional drag racing teams. And it's amazing how many show cars are based in North Carolina. It's just, this is truly a motorsports state. And this facility, I mentioned it's legendary and it's historic. And I'm not going over the top with those terms. It truly is. Well, we're kind of like the masters of drag racing, if you will. We, we've been around since 1970 as when this race track first opened. I've been here for 23 years. We conduct over 50 events a year, so, so we're very active and have been for a number of years. What would you say to some of the car show guys who want to get out on the racetrack? <laughs> well, they spent a lot of money on these show cars. There was a little more to go drag racing as well. You know, it's a funny thing about North Carolina. You go around these two-lane roads, and behind about every barn, there's a 55, 57 Chevy or a Corvette. It's just amazing how many show cars there are in the state. What are you seeing as a track owner, someone who is truly and obviously invested in the motorsports hobby? Well, folks can always race. I mean, I think Richard Petty said it best, when they built the second car, that's when racing started. Folks are going to always race. Now, I don't know if we're going to be all electric powered or sun powered or what we're going to be in the future, but uh, racing is alive and well, and of course the show car industry is alive and well, because folks still want to spruce these old cars up. Our final award is from Minty's, available at Menards, along with other fine true science products. The year was 1960. Eisenhower was president, the highway system was being built, and the jet age was in full effect. Cars like this were all over the road. We're here with Ray Blue, the Minty's top dog award winner with his awesome 1960 Chevrolet Brookwood. This car is spectacular. Tell us how you acquired it. Thank you. Um, it's, a, it's a 60 Brookwood. We found it in Arizona. Um, it's, a, it's a prior uh, SEMA show car for, for low riders, for airbags. So when we found it, it looked kind of like it does now, but it was really beat on. And it was from SEMA when they did it in New England in 1996, before they had it only in Las Vegas. But it was really done more for show and go on the outside with the air ride underneath. Um, when we found it, it was rusted, kind of worn out, and um, we took it and we, we pretty much repainted the whole bottom part of the car. We didn't have to repaint the top. Um, we tried to match the same color that was on it before, which is in a Suzu Jade green with blacks mixed in. We put in a little more black to give it the lines that, to show off the curves, like you said, the jet age, which is really cool. The engine bay used to be pretty much normal looking, so we modified the engine bay. We cleaned that off. Um, it's a 350 uh, ramjet in it, and then we put modern air conditioning in it. We redid the cargo area. Um, just trying to make it more modern now. We redid the air ride suspension on it. 
Um, it's still in the works, there's a lot of stuff we're still doing to it, but it's a lot of fun because it's, it's totally unique. Perfect road trip car, have you been out on the highways with it? Yeah, that's the other thing that's nice about it, is we take it pretty much anywhere we want. Um, when we came here this weekend, we drove from Charlotte, near Charlotte, so we brought in the trailer because it was pouring all, all day yesterday. But if it's not going to rain, we'll go two, three hours each way with it, and uh, we throw everything in the back, we throw our chairs in there, and cooler and everything else, and we just have fun. And the car seems like it's a work in progress. What's next for it? Um, I want to take off the rear suspension um, and see what I can do with that. Right now, the rear suspension, we've only, we've only worked on the gears and made sure the seals were all good. Um, I want to take the drive shaft and the rear suspension off, finish that, uh, uh, powder coat it, put it back on, and put uh, disc brakes on the back. Right now, I have disc on the front, but not on the back. And we've done the whole front suspension and the whole front frame. Ray, congratulations on your award. Beautiful car. Here is our final producer pick, another sweet machine from the 60s. 1962 Chevrolet Bel Air bubble top. The thing is outrageous. They call it the Street Thunder here with Billy Moose. Billy, tell us about your ride. It's a custom built car and I've done a lot of the work myself. It's got a 632 cubic inch big block Chevrolet style motor that runs on pump gas and it makes 1,015 horsepower. It's got a Tremec five-speed transmission, a Mosier 12-volt rear end. It's got like Winston Cup suspension front and rear, tube chassis. It's been lowered, modified, four bucket seats, uh, and it's obviously uh, painted black and blue like my wallet. It took me five years to build it. Most people really love it. Uh, I've had some critics that didn't, but you know, that's normal. What was the hardest part of your five-year rebuild? Running out of money. That was really probably the hardest part because I have a lot of money in the car. But uh, I built the motor myself. I designed the car, wired it, assembled it, done all the work pretty much myself. How do you feel when you're driving this car? When you're behind the wheel, you got a thousand horsepower under your feet. It feels pretty good. You can definitely keep up with traffic. We hope you've enjoyed this week's visit to Rockingham Dragway, and congratulations to all the special award winners. If you want to see more incredible Chevys from all around the country, be sure to join us here every week for the Menard Chevy Series. It's a great time with some great rides. See you next week from Bakersfield.